Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Big Boy Sports. How are y'all doing today? Hope y'all are doing good on this fine, flying Thursday evening heading into the weekend. And boy, oh boy, we got a nice weekend ahead. You know, we're talking the USFL, baby. We're talking USFL week number two. In this league, you know, week one, you know, I was kind of, I was okay, I was okay with it, you know, I was a little bit impressed. Now it's the stage where you, you're at this point where, oh yeah, you really got impressed me this week. So this week, the league, you know, came out with the statement. Daryl Johnston came out with a statement earlier today on the USFL social media pages. They were like, we're gonna go back to traditional balls for like field goals, PATs, punts, kickoffs. You know, because the ball, the balls with the chip in them, yeah, those weren't working out too good, and you, and we all saw how bad that was. So this week, I think everything will be fine. I think the kickers will adjust a little bit. I think the kickers will adjust a little bit. Who knows? We'll see. Um, again, field goals and, and PATs specifically were pretty bad, but punts, kickoffs, those were fine. It, it's just field goals, PAT, you know, that sort of thing was just kind of rough to look at. Uh, haven't really seen a lot of two-point, well, we see the couple of two-point tries, haven't seen, the, I don't think we see very many three-point tries, if at all, you know, so that that's one thing as well. Uh, again, sh still trying to get adjusted to all these rules and stuff myself, you know, for the USFL this year. And we start out Friday night. You know, 7 Central where I am, 8 Eastern where y'all are, where a good chunk of y'all might be. Uh, we got Michigan, New Jersey. Both these teams are 0 1. The spread for this game is New Jersey by a single point. The over under is 40 and a half. And the Panthers, they clean up the turnovers. Very simple. They had nine fumbles last week. Shea Patterson lost the. Uh, at least one of them, he might have lost even more because it was, it was that bad for the Panthers last week. And the Generals, you know, the Generals did all right. Luis Perez, DeAndre Johnson were an interesting tandem for the Generals, but I wonder if they could keep it up. And, Ray, and Randy Satterfield's also an interesting case at wide receiver for the Generals. Again, you know, both these teams outgained their competition last week, yet both lost. Um, and in the end, you know, I think it'll come down to, you know, you know, the quarterback play. I, I think, again, this is a lot, a lot of these games are going to come down to quarterback play, at, at least early on, you know, because, I mean, the Panthers, they just looked awful, I mean, at the quarterback position last weekend, and it, it was just rough. Like, New Jersey, they were able to keep up with Birmingham. They were able to keep up. You know, they were able to play well and everything like that. But it ultimately, in the end, you know, New Jersey couldn't get it done in the end. It's kind of disappointing that they couldn't get it done in the end. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with... The, oh, excuse me. I'm going to go with the... Uh, of course, I'm going to go with the over here for this game. I'm going to go with the over. Uh, I think New Jersey will win this game against Michigan, I, I, I'm just not, I've never been high on Shea Patterson, never been high on Paxton Lynch, you know, those guys are just not it. Luis Perez has been in these spring leagues for a little bit, and everybody, you know, for New Jersey is actually playing pretty well. Again, the, the wrong outcome happened last weekend, I think. And then we move on over to Saturday, Saturday, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Um... Uh, Honestly, you know, when I was talking with people, you know, they were like, Michigan had the worst performance in the league. And I, I was like, Pittsburgh has the worst performance in the league. They did not do anything until the third quarter ended. They were scoreless for like 40 minutes of this game. And really the only question here is, we know Pittsburgh's, you know, not that great in my opinion. You know, same with Michigan. Uh, a lot of people are going with Philadelphia, and the spread is Philadelphia by six and a half. The over/under is 35. I am taking the under here. Taking the under. If I were a betting man, I'm taking the under, and I'm taking Philadelphia in this game because I want to see what Brian Scott can do for Philadelphia. I want to see if he can, you know, shake off some of that rust because again, he's been in these leagues too. He's been in the Spurg League. And, you know, he, he might have a little bit of rust. You know, I'm not confident at all about Pittsburgh. I'm not confident at all. 
in the ballers. I think this might be the worst team in the league. Oh, oh God. it's not just the chicken salad thing, you know. It, it it's just it's just Pittsburgh is not good. They're not. I'm sorry. And then, you know, Birmingham, Houston, that's, you know, later in the day, that's in the evening, you know. The spread here is Birmingham by three. The over under here, 41. I'm taking the over for this one. I'm taking the over. If I were a betting man, I'd take the over. And, you know, hopefully Jamar Smith will start for Birmingham. I, I, I was cool with Alex McGill, but I think Jamar Smith should start. And Osiris Mitchell, he was solid, too, for Birmingham. And, you know, this defense for Houston is more intriguing than Clayton Thorson and the Houston Gamblers offense, in my personal opinion. I mean, the defense for Houston was all over Michigan last week. Can they get all over Birmingham and beat them up this week? We'll find out. We'll find out. Again, the spread here is Birmingham by three. Again, a lot of... And, you, and you've also... Seen, and what I've also noticed over the past, you know few days is that Birmingham has had more games, you know, their times for more games are being linked because, again, Birmingham is technically the home place, you know, for all the USFL games, so, you know, Birmingham's going to take precedence, so, like, three more game times have been revealed for Birmingham, like, one is on the 21st, the other is on the 29th, and I forgot the last one, uh, but, yeah, a couple more games, Birmingham have been revealed already, so... Um, if you look everywhere, you know, USFL website, Wikipedia, you know, all the different sites, you know, you'll see Birmingham has had some other games listed. Their times have been set. So, some of the, so again, the USFL with the whole scheduling thing, that's been kind of weird. You know, like they're trying to do it like college football when it's, when it's, it's not college football. You know, this is a spring football league. This is a professional league. Just get your schedule out in a nice and timely manner. Um, so yeah, Burt McCann's games have been, some of those games have been leaked, and um, as far as start times go, as far as networks go as well, you know, a lot of those Barbican games are going to be like Big NBC and Big Fox, you know, they're, they're, you know, so that's going to be real intriguing to see how all that goes down the line, but, you know, the USFL will confirm things as they confirm things, you know, they're trying to take this, you know, one week at a time here. And, you know, obviously they made an improvement already because, again, the, 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 the chips and the balls were not it. And then last but not least, New Orleans, Tampa Bay. Both these teams are coming in with W's on their records. Spread here is Tampa Bay by 2.5. The over-under, 40.5. And, and I don't know. Uh, I, I'd say take the under here. You know, this is going to be the only game on Sunday. You know, David Bellamy's going to be going after Jordan Tiabu, and I hope, and I always get names mixed up, so it's, it's either Tiabu or Tabu or something like that, but, you know, Jordan Tiabu, you know, I'll pronounce it how I pronounce it, you know, he, he's he's going to need, he's going to need something, he's going to need to do a little bit more, he did, he did serviceable last week, he looked like one of the best, you know, quarterbacks in this league, he's going to need to do a little bit more this week, and David Bellamy's going to be right you know, right in his face all weekend long, or at an all Sunday afternoon long. And then you got the Breakers. They got a couple of interesting backs. We've talked about Jordan Ellis, but they've also got TJ Logan in the backfield. They ran for over 170 for the Breakers last week. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be real intriguing to see how this New Orleans run game. A lot of people are like, you know, they're high on the Breakers now. They're high. They're pretty high on the Breakers. Um, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay here because I think, again, you know, Tampa Bay did a little bit more. They dominated last week. You know, you know they had a couple good drives on the offense, then they let the defense take over. And that's exactly what I think will happen here. Now, New Orleans can put up a good fight, I think, but I think this might be the best game of the weekend by a long shot here. Uh, and I, I honestly would take the over here. Uh, I, don't, I think I said under earlier, but I'm going to say take the over, actually, you know. Again, Tampa Bay will still win this game. I think Tampa Bay has the best odds to win the championship, in my personal opinion. So we'll see, you know, how everything goes this weekend. But in any case, um, hope you all enjoyed. Um, there will be something about the XFL later. We're not going to go into it now, but we're going to go into it later. So if you take a look at the playlist, it's all spring football stuff and everything like that. So we've discussed USFL, we've discussed XFL. We haven't discussed AAF because that was 
I did not talk about the AAF in their lone season. But, you know, USFL will be here. Uh, we'll be back, you know, Sunday afternoon or early evening, like 5, 6 o'clock, 6 Eastern, 5 Central here, you know, around that time to discuss week two and get week two done and everything like that and you know just get get that wrapped up so we can wrap it up in a nice little bow and you know get it done because i mean this 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 has been a crazy crazy week you know for the usfl all that hype they're gonna have, they're gonna have to keep that hype up and if they can keep the hype up i think they got a long shot in doing things well so we'll see what the usfl can do this weekend hopefully you know, everybody. You know, what do y'all? What did y'all think about again? What did y'all think? What, what are y'all thinking about this new, um, the, the new kicking ball situation? Like the new, like the new ball for kicking and punting. You know, what y'all think about that? What do y'all think about the games this week? That's another thing. And you know, again, how, how do y'all feel about the USFL in general right now? That that's my last question to y'all. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you all on Sunday. For a little doubleheader this weekend into our football and then USFL Week 2. See you Sunday.